a massive engineering project is underway. Our venerated emperor, Shi Huangdi, has ordered that a long wall measuring 10,000 li from eastern coast to western desert be erected along the northern border. Being a proven and able administrator, you have been appointed to construct a critical section of this great wall. Once complete, it will serve as a solid, impenetrable barrier protecting the northern commanderies, indeed the entire empire, from incursions by despoiling northern barbarians. Your first priority should be to establish one or perhaps several settlements for the influx of workers expected shortly. Once the peasants have arrived, put up some laborers' camps at appropriate intervals connected by roads to the wall's construction site that has already been mocked by engineers. Use the abundant natural resources found in the area to construct the wall. Meanwhile, do not neglect your defenses, as Xiong Nu never sleep. G'day mates, welcome back to Emperor. This time we're going to be holding off the Zhong Nu and uh, constru uh, constructing and continuing to build the Earthen Great Wall. Looks like uh, what we built before was not sufficient, so we're going to help build a much larger portion of it. Let's go in and see what they are presenting us with. They are presenting us with... Um, well, it's a pretty big map, it's nice and open, it's a bit bigger, uh, or more usable at least, than the previous one they gave us when we had to construct a great wall. Uh, what resources have we got? Catapult forts, weaponsmiths, clay pits, logging sheds, and looks like there's iron somewhere on the map. Iron is somewhere, there's copper. That's useful to know, I can throw down a, um, a mint up here. I think I forget that, I forgot that last mission. There's a whole bunch of iron here, which is not too hard to get to. And there's a bunch of iron down the bottom here as well. So we're gonna keep all of our iron smelters sort of in this area so they can get between the two as required. I think we're gonna try and go for a heavy iron production this time, assuming that we can trade iron and or weapons away. Uh, it doesn't appear to be any other iron that I can see, nothing. Nothing on the northern side either. What can we grow? Actually, workshops, kiln, and jade carver studio. Not a huge amount of uh, industry available. But we can grow three food types, okay? We can hunt another one, but the hunter's tents. I don't particularly like hunter's tents. I find they're a bit of an unreliable food source. And the fact that we can grow three should be more than sufficient for the most part. Uh, we can get hemp as well, which is useful. And... I think that's all we need to know. We have three gods again. I think it's going to be an ongoing thing from here on out. And uh, it was just the earthen wall. Given that we're going to be building a lot of stuff, I think it'll be a two housing block solution this time. And I'll probably dump them in down here and farm up here. Uh, although, doing it the other way around, having the people up living up here on this more marginal land and farming on the good stuff down here is probably going to be the way to go. Alrighty guys, here we are. We're all nicely set up with ourselves the uh, the two housing block strategy this time. I had thought about doing a third one. I've got the potential to do it up here because there really is nothing else that I can grow other than uh, food and hemp. So, uh, you know, I can use up a lot more of the land. Ooh, Zhang Yang has become an ally. Interesting. Uh, I've got our farms down here with my uh, little thing that I tried a couple episodes ago. Looking quite nice and beautiful there. And of course, a couple of hemp farms down. Now, I did notice that... There were already four trade routes already open. We've got Linzi, Anyi, Zhang Yang, and Huang Zhan. I've sent something off to everybody else, but I forgot to check this at the beginning of the mission. They will buy 12 iron, which is kind of useful. They also buy a fair few ceramics, so that will be pretty much uh, most of our money taken care of in Linzi. Over here at Anyi, they will not buy anything particularly useful. They will sell us salt and millet if we need uh, additional stuff, but I think we are going to be fine with our food because we've got so much land. Uh, in regards to uh, Zhang Yang, they will buy carved jade, so if we can find someone to sell us jade, and I've got the, I guess, the effort, in, you know, the mental effort to spare, I may end up doing some of that. But most of the time, it's just a pain in the ass sticking around with importing and exporting stuff and keeping everything feng shui oriented. Uh, they will buy iron, which is kind of handy. And mm, nothing much is worthwhile there. They could sell us uh, maybe some weapons if we're in a bind, but we can make our own. 
Uh, they will also buy weapons over here, and they'll only buy 12 of them. But uh, between that, we've got 12 weapons, we've got 12 iron, and we've got uh, so 24 iron and 12 weapons total per year. Should be more than what we can produce just from our trade partners here. Uh, if we need more, then of course I've sent stuff off, and uh, we can find out what everyone else will buy in time. So with that, I think it's going to be worthwhile getting our iron production set up quick smart. And I don't think anything requires timber in iron production. So we're going to set up right down here. And actually, before I go any further, before I go any further, I want to throw down a um, an administrative city. We're going to throw you right there. And that will allow me to uh, throw down that mint up here before I forget any further. Get that mint in. Okay, apparently that was a waste. I cannot put a mint down. That's a little bit shit. Maybe it'll come back. Maybe it needs staff before it'll work. Now, I'll come back and check later if I can build a mint. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. I don't know why they put the copper up there then. No worries. We'll move on from there. Okay, trade with Ying has opened. Uh, Xu, everyone else seems to be rejecting. Let's have a look what Ying will do for us. Where's Ying? There we go. They buy even more iron. Excellent. They also buy wheat, which uh, we can grow here. But I don't think it's worth necessarily the effort unless of course we have a huge amount of unemployment I can set up a dedicated wheat farm um, Xu will also buy iron Wu will also buy iron Nomad Camps will buy wheat if we can make it but they'll also sell us jade if we want to later although I suspect they're going to try and invade us at some point based on the mission brief briefing Ceramics could be handy uh, they'll buy more weapons even better so yeah, definitely weapons and iron. We're gonna basically able to sell as much as we can produce here. Uh, we're still at nine and a bit grand left in the bank. Uh, the main problem now is just waiting for workers to come on in. So uh, when they get in, then our food will start to kick in. And let's actually let's actually put agriculture up on high as well, and that'll uh, that'll focus everybody onto the agriculture here, as well as keeping our uh, our place is safely looked after. So if we can get a bit of agriculture in, we can get the food in, and then I can start stockpiling and throwing down some uh, some shops. Okay, food is beginning to dribble in slowly. I think that's all of our has a wheat harvested this year. Begins in March. That's all been done this year. So with that, what we can do is take our focus off agriculture, and uh, it'll open up these storage areas so they can start delivering everything. All the resources being dropped off. Uh, I've also drawn, thrown down a little um, iron area over here. This will just start smelting all the iron, and uh, then we can move on to weapons at a slightly later date. I just want to get things fired up before we have our population fully ready. Uh, at this point, I've almost given up looking for feng shui. I just sort of, you know, I take a rough idea and just run with it. Um, yeah, see, most of it's done. I'm not trying all that hard anymore. It's starting to give me the shits the longer I play this game, but I will. Uh, I will try and keep things at, le at least a little bit feng shui-y, if possible, but, you know, sometimes you just gotta look at the care factor. Okay, we are back to the harvesting season, or the, the growing season again, so I'm gonna throw our workers back up on high here. And I'm actually going to put industry on low. So that'll, uh, yeah, that'll slow down the iron production, but it's really not the priority at the moment. It's getting the actual city uh, able to sustain itself. So that'll get this all ticking over nicely. We should have then three full food types coming in this year. And uh, which will mean... What will that mean? It will mean that we can get everything sorted. It'll be ceramics up next. Now I could put them... Where could I put my ceramics? Like actually they don't need to be too near water do they? I keep thinking in terms of Pharaoh and the other games where uh, you needed to be as close to or nearly adjacent to water. What I can do though is just put my clay pits anywhere where there's probably a water table. So I think it'll be worthwhile getting a nice big ceramics production down here. So I can use that for gifting to gods and anything else that I might want in the future. So let's get that sorted now. Okay, we've moved on to the next level up to plain food now. Some of the housing is beginning to devolve simply because we haven't got enough food coming through. But with the harvest coming in now, we should be pretty much all sorted there. Uh, hemp. Hemp will be not really an issue. We've got enough of that coming with our two farms. We've got loads of that coming in, and we'll be able to use that for our uh, for our gods shortly. I don't need it either, but I have thrown down a Taoist temple 
and a Taoist shrine over here just for the fun of it. Um, the reasoning for behind that, I suppose, is to absorb some of the future unemployment that I may have. It's probably going to be worthwhile to start construction on the Great Wall shortly, considering that's the only thing. I could spend a whole bunch of time just building up, but uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that just yet. I am going to source a supply of income, a source of money. Uh, they'll buy weapons, which could be handy, but I think we can also sell the iron to a whole bunch of other people. So let's get on to that. Uh, okay, with that, we are all nicely sorted. Most of the iron has gone into these weaponsmiths here. Happy New Year, yep. Most of the iron's gone into these weaponsmiths now. How's our unemployment? Holding off. Uh, and, uh, you know, what we can produce will, will be turned into weapons. Any excess can be exported through uh, Zhenyang. Well, they will buy 12 iron a year, not a huge amount. But uh, that's, a, that's a fair chunk of it if we're not using it. And of course, all the weapons can go off to Huang Zhang over here. I notice that Lindsay can also buy iron, but they're better off buying a fair chunk of the uh, ceramics that we can produce here. We're going to be massively, massively overproducing on ceramics here. So please don't die. Does it matter if they die? I don't think it matters if they die, as long as they buy stuff from me before they die. Uh, food production is not quite holding up as well as I would like, so I'm thinking I'm actually going to throw down another... I need ceramics to go any further, and we haven't got enough workers. So let's throw down a ceramics shop here and here, and uh, maybe we can stop exporting ceramics for the time being. So I'm going to need... I'm going to need these guys to level up to get the workers I require. But we also need a lot more food, so I'm thinking three farms may not quite be enough, at least for the early bit. It'll, uh, it will cover me once they've had the food flow through them and, and, uh, supply these houses properly. But all the leveling up is draining them quite quickly. Alrighty, there we go. We've got ourselves some irrigation ditches. That should help bump up our food production significantly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works. I know it doesn't change fertility at all. The land is still 65% fertile despite being irrigated. So it's a little bit different to the way it worked in, uh in Pharaoh, but I think it does increase our production in some way. Uh, I couldn't really fit one in here comfortably without destroying a bunch of stuff, but uh, I suppose it would have destroyed something anyway, but I did bring it up the long way. If, uh, if it gets in the way, I can always dig around with that later. Either way though, we've got 74 unemployed people and they are going to be put to work very shortly. What I think we're going to need, what do we require first? We require a shit ton of timber. So to that end, what we're going to do is set up a big set of timber production right here with a bunch of uh, laborers camps around the place as required. Just an example of how much I hate feng shui in this game. Look at that. It's just one tile off. This this thing here can be built where it is. And, uh, you know, so I assume that can be built there properly. But no, this warehouse is an absolute pain in the ass. Either way, we'll build it up one tile more and I can fix that with uh, just a little bit of heartache. Okay, worth all noting, we don't have actual access to an acupuncturist, so we're limited to elegant dwellings again. I had forgotten a little bit about that. I, I saw it at the beginning, but I didn't quite pay much attention to it. So we may even need a third housing block. And I think I'm going to set one up just over here. Uh, there's nowhere else really for me to put one. So hopefully they can get access to the ceramics if required. I'm also going to limit how much we sell at any one time. Let's leave that to 12 per go. Um, let me think about this. I'm going to need, yeah, there's really much no choice in the matter. I'm going to need to throw down another uh, housing block up there because we are still short of people. I mean, I, I did bump it up to high to cover all of that. But uh, once I start throwing down these work camps, we are still going to be short of people. So uh, let's get that sorted. Oh, okay, there we go. There's a couple of houses all lined up. It's not a huge amount, but uh, that should get that done. If I need more, I can throw another one up there. It's not quite as efficient because there's a certain amount of workers required to run any housing block at any given time, uh, you know, in terms of staff for all these various amenities. But uh, there should be a bit of housing population profit there, and I can just play around with the rest as required. Now, the next step is going to be to get these uh, laborers camps ready and stocked up. Now, my understanding is that provided the, they have worker access, they will travel cross-country to get where they need to go. So I can just place them, uh, you know, wherever the hell I, I need them, wherever the feng shui permits. And, uh, and they should make their way up as required. So... 
Let's see if that works. I don't think they burn down either. So if they do collapse, then I can fix that problem. These guys should be able to just be placed around where necessary. And uh, long, as long as they can get worker access, they should just run up and take care of all that for me. Oh shit, I didn't realize I'd just gone into debt. Looks like Zhang Yang, my ally, has given me a bunch of cash as well. Uh, why am I in debt? I'm not selling as much stuff as I could be. You're maxed out. Uh, you are maxed out on your weapons and you're still selling iron. So I could sell more weapons. Before I do that though, I think I'm going to work on getting an infantry fort. Not harmoniously placed because I can't find anywhere to put it. So I'll just put you down there and that'll get that sorted. Um, it's going to eat into my profits as well. But I think the next step will be to start taxing people. So we've got enough... Happy New Year, yep. We've got enough timber going down. I'm going to start throwing down a, uh, a little logging shed. There should do. And I can start, let's say, knocking out one house in each of these. And uh, putting down some taxation. Get a little bit more cash coming in that way. And in typical style, the AI took it to the least profitable tax office first. Oh uh, well, the rest of them will get timber shortly. In the meantime, up here, looks like everything's working well. So far I haven't had any issues with uh, difficulty bringing it to the monument, so it's not too far away, keeping it all nicely located here. Let's just make sure my gods are happy as well. They're getting a little bit pissed off, but I should have more than sufficient wood to uh, keep them all happy. We're not making a huge amount of profit, so I'm gonna throw down another farmhouse up here, just randomly, it doesn't have to be anywhere in particular, and you can sell to, where are they? To, ooh, was it Ying, I think it was? Ying, Ying will buy 36 wheat per year. So what I'm gonna do is just make this a massive wheat production field, employees needed, that's fine, I can get that sorted very quickly. Then you can buy and sell off all the, uh, one, all the wheat that we can get in one year. Oh, here we go, look at this, let's see, it's, um, now I'm told it's possible to predict what's going to happen based on, uh, which elemental year we're in. So, uh, improve production yield with metal. I'm going to take a risk here and hope that it's going to be weapon production and iron production. So, uh, mints, no. Bronzeware makers, no. Smelters, yes. Furnaces, I suppose, yes. Uh, hemp fields, yeah, that's not really relevant, but okay, great. A whole bunch more hemp, yay. Okay, let's see how much of this stuff we get in one go, when one farm can produce. When, with that, we'll know if we need to throw down more farms or not. Uh, wheat is 28 per good, but it's a fairly small little investment in terms of cost here. So that should provide me with more than enough cash. Wheat's also a highly productive good. So I'm interested to see how much we make here. Okay, looks like we put in 1,900 from one farm. Um... It's bumped up our cash a bit. I could probably even throw down a second farm just behind it here. And I think I might do that, a smaller version, just to uh, take off the rest of that stuff that we might need. Okay, we're having major, major devolution problems here. I'm not sure exactly why. I think I may need to store some of my food production. So to that end, what we're going to do is throw down a warehouse for each of the three food types. Uh, you can also be blocked off, so nothing goes wrong with you. It should come all the way down. If it doesn't, then, I don't know, I'll figure that out later. But uh, what I think is happening is we're overproducing the food, but the people are waiting here to deliver, say, the wheat, for example, uh, that they don't come out and say, you know, here's a whole bunch of bean curd just waiting to be sent off. And, uh, you know, the millet is about to be harvested. So we're not dropping off all three food types. And with that, we're, we're uh, you know, varying between the building types a little bit. So... It is giving us a few unemployment problems. Hopefully, I can get that sorted by having a pure bean curd storage, overflow storage, having a, uh, what are we growing? Definitely wheat, millet and wheat. There we go, we'll get this all sorted. And that should hopefully, yep, that should hopefully allow us to uh, get everything sorted and maybe get a bit more food flowing in. Yeah, see, it's the millet is where the problem is. Zhang Yang requiring some weapons. We have loads of them backing up, so I can dispatch those quite handily. Uh, looks like our food production is still decent for the time being. Yeah, I've got more than enough hemp that you never need. Looks like food production is still fairly decent. We may need to up 
our production once more though. I can probably move this stuff around and get another farm placed down here. I could probably even knock out one of these hemp farms because at the moment all I'm doing is just gifting off as quickly as I can get it. And just a little bit of a note, I'm bringing in uh, Zhi Wang Mu just to uh, help us build. She wanders around the city, but she will actually help us build while her while she's present in the city. The all monuments get built a little bit quicker. Uh, looks like our food's holding up fairly nicely now that we've had a chance to, uh, you know, drop off the entire year's production. I think we should handle it much better. And if that doesn't work, then um, then we may have a problem. For the time being, things are looking pretty good. We actually ran out of millet first even though it was the most recent production so what i'm going to do is knock down and uh destroy one of these what do they call it one of these um hemp farms and throw in a another millet production okay there we go that's a whole lot more farming that we can do in and with that the millet should be a little bit better it could be that there's an overlap with uh harvest in september begins in July so it could be that there is an overlap uh, between the different seasons and so we're not growing enough we grow more of the wheat because it's up first and the AI little farm AI uh, prioritizes one over the other um, yeah it could be that during this harvest here that we miss a lot of our uh, millet growing either way we'll see if this stabilizes our food supply or not uh, yeah there we go collapsing again so either way we'll get that sorted quick smart and then we're back to stability okay they filled up our millet supply by the looks of things now food is a lot more stable still burning through that millet and when the happy new year comes around we'll use up a fair chunk of food uh, yep it looks like our supplies are holding up well wheat is still there and of course now they're starting to farm the wheat I think with that we've pretty much solved all our food problems and there we go, millet harvest coming in, and we have not used up all the millet in storage. So uh, everything's perfect, perfectly ticking along. With that, we've nearly finished the Great Wall as well. Just a couple more bits of dirt to be put in, and then I can start pulling down all this scaffolding. Not long now. Okay, the Nomad camps are launching an invasion. That's a little bit of a problem. We are nearly finished building off this wall, but we haven't quite got... Uh, you know, we've only got the one fort that we can place down, so I'm going to throw down a couple of towers and see if that will help us. I'm assuming they're going to come from the north here, so we'll see if we can hold them somewhere along here. Uh, okay, I haven't gone overboard, but I think maybe that should be enough. I'm, I might um and ah a little bit about this, but uh, oh, oh, we might even finish off the Great Wall in time. Uh, we can spack those weapons off easily. In fact, I may even ask for some help from Zhang Yang. Well, what we'll do is we will... Uh, request defensive aid and they will come along and help us uh, and with our with our single fort and with what we've got here we should be able to hold it off but more than likely we're even going to finish building the great wall before we get there before the invasion arrives we'll see how what happens here okay forces have arrived from Zhang Yang we will accept them the question now is where uh, kidding me are they can I not move them they're just going to sit here. I hope they're not going to just disappear before the other guys... Uh, oh no, I can move them. So let's move them all up here and uh, see if they are any use to us. Well, Nomad Camps will be here in two months. And uh, yep, they regard me more highly. It's fine. They'll be here in two months. Now, these guys, I don't know if their, their morale is ticking away by just standing here or not. But uh, I'm beginning to move them up. We will see what happens. Okay, the Nomad Camps have launched an invasion. We didn't finish the wall in time. Let's fight to defend the city. I could very easily bribe them off, so they look like a small force. But uh, let's fight to defend and see if we can take them down.
And there we go, smashed them back. They have, uh, they have been totally, completely and utterly routed. With that, we can pretty much just force our guys to go back. Huang Di did turn up, uh, but in the end, wasn't required. Pretty easy so far. And it looks like the forces auto return back to Jian Yang because we hadn't seen any military action. I am very much appreciated for their help. Happy New Year celebration. Okay, it looks like we're actually building a bigger wall than we were last time. We've got these quite large um, tower sort of things being built. That's kind of cool. So we're putting in a little bit more effort than the original wall last time, which was essentially just this wall part. And that's why we didn't win the mission just yet. But I think once this final phase goes up, we will have one from here on out. And there we go, final build, bit little built up there. The great wall is done with a nice, uh, I think that's a dragon of some sort on the gate. I can't quite see, I had a little look in, but uh, either way, we got ourselves a nice big fortification here that will keep out the Zhongyu in future. With that, we should move onwards to victory very, very shortly. Any minute now. At last, the wall is complete. Thanks in part to your tireless efforts, an impassable barrier now stretches serpentine light along the northern border of the empire. The next time those foul Songnu horsemen come this way, they will not find it so easy to penetrate our defenses. And there you go guys, we have smashed back. The Emperor Qin's Great Wall has been built at Badaling. No doubt it's extending far, far along the frontier, but we've done our little part, and we had a quick little tussle with the Zhongnu as well. We've managed to hold them back, and uh, defenses are going up all around China. I'm sure one day this will be a great tourist attraction. But anyway, I've been Bill said this has been Emperor. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button if you do indeed enjoy all this uh, Emperor content. If not, of course, remember, thumbs down button right next to it, not that far away, but at least leave a comment, let me know exactly what it is you don't like, and how I can improve. Take care guys, I'll see you around.